gentles and lady men. I'm Spiro, and I'm not a wizard. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to dig a little bit more into Wordle, the program that I wrote um, at the beginning of this year. So it's been, I've made a couple of videos on it so far, and it's it's growing. It's it's with, with the help of others on on the tweeters um, and commenters on these videos. Um, it's it's kind of growing into something that might come closer to the real thing on the web. Uh, so currently, the version I've I've published so far. Um, <clears throat> does not check the legitimacy of the words that you type. So as you type each attempt, the the real version on the web um, checks its word list to see if what you've typed is a legal word. Uh, mine, for speed reasons at the beginning, um, I left that feature out. Uh, trying to go through on a, on with with my coding skills on a one megahertz machine, going through a um, a word list of fifteen hundred words, just was going to be too slow. Um, another feature I don't have, which I'm hoping to try and figure out how to do in the near future. More, more it's more about real estate space. Um, and that is to have the keyboard at the bottom um, that shows you which letters uh, you have eliminated in, you know with previous guesses it, can't, it it does help a lot like it's it's a um, you know having that visual cue there where you can see which keys are still available ones you haven't used um, kind of helps with with coming up with the next guess. Um, so that that's one that I'll that will be in a future version. So but at the moment what I what I want to do is um, you, you'll see here I've got special thanks to Dan Sanderson. Um, and I've started noting down the version number up here so that it's easy to be able to identify when you know now that I am actually doing updates um, which version you you are using so I what what uh, Dan has done is he has helped out with writing a binary search routine um, what what I had done and in fact I haven't put his code into this version but um, I will before I release it onto my GitHub. So by the time you see this video, the code that is in this window, um, the binary search will be in version 1.2 that I release. Uh, for the purposes of this video demonstration, I've I've left that code out just to show you the the version that's on the right here. Um, has got a uh, a word checker um, but what I I wasn't aware one of the things that um, Dan's code highlighted was you can actually do string comparisons with greater than less than and equals which I didn't know I thought that you would have to convert them to numbers somehow and and do the comparisons that way but that is is, is kind of a, a an, an enlightening thing um, so anyway what I did here I'll just show you how quickly my current version scans through and then I'll show you what I did to get it to to that it's slow it's still slower than I'd like um, Dan's version is faster but we get to that um, so th this version allows you to type any word whether it's legitimate or not just just to clarify um, I think no all oh, right this does the check sorry my bad 
this does the check. So if I type in AEIOU, it will go through and you can see a spinning bar at the top and it'll say word not in dictionary, press a key to continue. So press a key, backspace it. And if I type in a legitimate word, ding, 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 it's thinking about it. It's also not in the dictionary because it's a very small dictionary, which again is one of the reasons why I didn't want to include that feature. Uh, but uh, if we include a word that is in the dictionary, uh, let's try another one. I probably should have planned ahead and figured out a couple of starter words. Here we go. Okay, so you saw that that still took a few seconds, right? Um, I, I had to put that um, spinny bar at the top just to give some feedback that something was happening. Uh, when I first put it in, I thought the program had crashed, and I was like, so take note of how long it takes. A word starting with P, there are fewer words starting with P in the dictionary than there are starting with S and T. So this one, if I press enter on it, will be 1, 2, 3, 4, roughly 4 seconds. So it's pretty slow. Um, it, it, yeah. So if I if I use a word starting with S, one, two, three, four, five, six, Oh, that found it pretty quick. I don't know why. I don't know why that is. So what, what I've got here in this window uh, so if you so this is actually it's a it's a really interesting piece of code. So um oh let me first off show you what I did in this version. Weasels. Uh, where did I put it? I think it's in. I'll try 600 onwards. We'll see where we go. Here we go. So what I do is, I'm basically saying if the a, a is just a dummy variable. So if a, which is the the, it, uh, so it goes through the 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 GS string, which is the guess, character by character, and it looks for the first character. This is is your first character um, ASCII value of sixty five, which matches the Petsky A character. If it is, then your uh, the the Z is the ZL is the starting point, the low point of the array that it's going to start searching at and ZH is the high point so between items 0 and 44 in my word array uh, the word list the full word list uh, are words starting with A so if it, the first letter is a B then it'll it'll search between items 45 and 119 and so on uh, through to Z. And there are obviously some letters that have got fewer items than others, like this one here, 522 to 539. So what is that? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. So J, there aren't many words starting with J, so that would return pretty quickly. So again, And this was before I learned that you could use, uh, that you could actually compare strings. That might have made me not need to use the ASCII conversion. Um, and I could have gone just if A equals A, if A equals B, if, you know, and so on. <clears throat> so, in Dan's version, we've, we've set up, 
I, I, I imported my full word array into this code. Um, so if we see here, what we're going to do is we're going to check for a bunch of words to see if they're in, and it's going to return the R, which is going to be negative 1 for true that it was found, or 0 that it wasn't found. Um, and so I am imported my entire word list. So if we run that, there's it looks for like six odd words. Bam, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So in, in, in six odd seconds, seven odd seconds, it's gone through and it's done all of these checks. And it's returned roast, negative one, so that was found. Boobs, that was found. Rays, wasn't found, as we saw in my version when I tried to type in rays, it said it wasn't in the dictionary. Pizza, was found. Lemur, was found. Butts, wasn't found. A random non-word, Zoltz, uh, wasn't found. Scorn, was found. So that's really, really quick. So I'm going to... I I will implement this code into here before I release it. So the version that you'll be able to download in, in, the, in the description will have this search. Um, uh, I've, I've since had a... This morning I, I saw a comment from... Um, another user on the channel, uh, Igor K, who uh, mentioned the use of uh, rel files, relative files, and and I kind of wasn't aware of those on the C64, so they they might be able to be used as well um, instead of reading in and dimensioning that array. Uh, but I, I thought about actually using, um, uh, what did I want to do, 1300. So, 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 so Dan's code here is actually poking or peeking into the, the data itself as it is stored in basic memory. So he's not doing any reads um, and that relies on the data being in uh, in this exact format, right? So each line has got five words of five characters. Uh, so he does a check to see um, that minus six refers to the five characters and the comma. Um, so I'd, I, I don't fully understand I haven't broken this down and, and, and tried to analyze it um, properly. Um, I'm I'm not a mathematician either, so this is uh, it takes a lot more brain power for me to 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 process that. So um, so so he's he's reading this directly out of memory and. So the, the, the pokes, the 66 and the 65, uh, I believe, are zero-page addresses that store memory pointers to where the, the next read pointer is. So um, the, the data here has to start with... A, the, the first data statement is the number of words and as far as I can see having that serves the purpose of uh, actually setting those memory pointers uh, if, if you haven't read any data yet there is no next pointer to point to so having this here uh, effectively sets the next address which is then where it's going to start finding the actual words that we're looking for uh, and 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 I even wondered that whether I could use 
this to instead of doing that data load at the beginning into an array to use the same method to pick a random word out of memory um, and and Igor K the commenter I mentioned had the same idea uh, but to do it out of a relative file um, and and that might actually work better because then I won't ha when it, when you load the program you won't have to load all of this you know x number of kilobytes of data as well um, so yeah it might that might that'll be something that I'm gonna look at in the future um, keeping the data in a separate file and migrating these the, the the initial load and the word check to a relative file rather than a block of data statements in memory I mean that'll change obviously this um, the 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 peaking and poking how that works uh, but the the other parts of it I think will be still kind of useful so anyway that's something that I'm going to play with uh, I've rambled long enough I think um, I'll leave you to it thanks to everyone for the comments for the help um, for the advice and to Dan for the code uh, it's all very very much appreciated um, and I'll keep hacking at it and uh, you keep leaving comments and telling me what you think and uh, we'll see you in the next one